Good morning, class. This is Mr. Salgado, and today is just going to be a really quick lesson, but it's building up on what we talked about yesterday. And to just basically do a quick review, yesterday we started to talk about stratigraphy. I should probably make this bigger so everybody knows what that is. Stratigraphy is just the study of rock strata or rock layers. And as we talked about yesterday, these rocks are layered one on top of each other, similar to how you would layer dirt on the ground and it would look completely different. But this is done over millions and millions of years. And yesterday we talked about different rules that we use when making, studying these rock layers. Whether that it's the fact that they're horizontal, that they're widespread, that if things cut through them, they tend to be newer, and etc. But it's just basically we're examining a rock layer. Once you have a specific layer, you find its age. It's kind of a simple concept to get. It kind of builds off last week's concept, which was fossils and ages in fossils. On that note, we're going to move on to our next section. Now, these examples, if you haven't noticed, are all basically talking about rock layers in specific areas. Uh, for example, this one over here is a rock layer that is in the Grand Canyon. And that's a really famous area for a study because it's a huge dip that's been available for millions of years due to erosion. And as such, you can do a lot of studying of rock layers in there. In fact, you can see them as you go down or if you can see it from a distance I don't think they let you guys go down anymore regardless what I'm trying to say is if this is just talking about specific areas then what are the rules when we're talking about large areas say for example from a city to a city or areas in different states or even areas in different continents for that matters well that's what we're going to jump into today. And it's relatively short. There's not many of these, but we are going to just jump in. These are methods for finding, for studying rock layers that are far distances apart. And the first one is actually kind of simple. It's just widespread layers. Basically, while some layers may only be in specific areas, there are other layers that spread throughout extreme distances for example Europe in, the, in itself has a large layer of limestone in the continent and this picture shows us an example of two cliffs first of all the cliffs of Dover which is in Scotland a very very famous place highly recommend to go there I actually want to go there my bucket list place one of my bucket list places but I'm really getting off track but regardless these cliffs over here are the same layer as these cliffs over here and these cliffs are in France and the interesting thing about it is if you look up on a map Scotland and France aren't close to each other in fact Scotland is its own little island while France is part of a larger continent and yet these two layers of limestone are the same so much so that they literally cut through both of these layers to, um, please excuse the noises as neighbors tend to interrupt things. Anyway, they literally cut a tunnel from one side of the layer over here to the other side of the layer. It's known as the English Channel and is a very famous tunnel that goes underwater from an island to a continent. Imagine if Hawaii was close enough to make a tunnel going from Hawaii to the U.S. That's the kind of tunnel that it is over here. And it's only possible because this layer was shared for this far of a distance. And a specific layer, limestone, is really, really easy to dig into. So sometimes just some layers tend to spread out over insane distances. And if they don't, well, there's some other extreme examples. I think you see the two down here, but let me just review them. First off are key beds. Key beds are similar to what index fossils do in that it's something that occurs worldwide and not just in a specific area. 
So just like with the index fossils where we said, oh, little shells or little chocolate bites are in like different areas of the world so we can use them to age everything on that same time zone, key beds follow the same deal. We, there's, key beds are the kind of thing where you could see one in the U.S. and you can see another one in Asia. And it's the exact same bed, the exact same layer. Now the reason this happens is generally due to a catastrophic event, such as a giant volcano. I don't know if uh, you guys know, or if you guys have seen 2012, um, you guys got, well, I mean, they overdo it for that movie, but it is kind of something that happens in history. Um, a large volcano exploding and ash covering the entire world. That layer tends to stay on the ground, and it gets covered with more things over millions and millions of years and what happens there is that layer of ash can be known as a key layer that basically charts that moment in time so you can go around the world and basically study say oh there's a layer of ash from when that volcano blew up 300 million years ago or uh, another famous one is there's that layer of clay that we believe proves that the world was hit by a giant asteroid. That's another famous one that is used as well. And you can tell the time by finding these key layers and then studying the rest of the rock around them. So you look at the key layers, then you look at the rocks that are specific to that specific time. And the last one is actually something that overlaps with our study last week, is that index fossils can be used as well. And this one's kind of obvious if you think about it. If index fossils tells us the exact time of an area, then we can compare that with another rock. Sure, one may be sandstone, one may be marble, but if they both got troglobites in them, then they were created at the exact same time. And you could tell ages and you could piece together those clues and then you can go into, you know, more specific areas and then find the clues. Oh, here's a layer. Um, and the layer of ash that I'm talking about is a lot lower than this probably. But just to give an example, oh, here's the layer of ash that happened right over there. And so that means this has got to be newer than some areas in Asia that have this specific thing. But we also found some troglobites in this area right over here. So that's kind of interesting. I guess this, you know, this layer of ash is a little older than we thought. Maybe it's uh, related to a different event. And then you can study that event somewhere else in the world and start getting compar comparison in time. And that's when you would get to, okay, my theory is that about 400 million years ago, or 400 billion years ago, there was a large event that encircled the entire world and caused a mass extinction. That's how we figure, that's how we, um, theorize these things. We find the evidence based off rock ages, based on worldwide events, key layers, that means something happened worldwide. And then you start putting these clues together and you make a little story out of it. So, like I said, it's a short lesson for today, half the size of last week, but we are going to stop right there. Oh, I almost forgot this. This is what I'm explain about the crocobites even though they're in different positions it's the same layer because it's the same age because they have the same shells I forgot to have that picture there but anyway that's going to be it for today next time we are going to be going a little more specific so we talked about the clues and everything like that but next time we're going to talk about the results how has the study of rock layers given us time frame and what's the exact time frame that we can use i actually have a chart and those of you that looked at the chapter on CK12 saw there's a chart that we gotten now that we've taken all this together. But that's all I'm going to say. Tomorrow was its own thing. And yeah, that's it for today. So I will see you guys next time.